<clears throat> right, hello again. It's still Friday the 13th. Dun dun dun, Friday the 13th. Um, and having just done equivalent of a cast strength uh, elements of Isla, which was pretty intense, um, I've drunk quite a bit of water to try and rinse my mouth out, get rid of the flavours. Um, and I'm going to do another Isla that isn't actually an Isla distillery, which means that the last 10 that I'm going to do are actual proper Islas. And this one was a, a donation from a gentleman called Charlie Cavai, who um, was an um, employee of the whiskey shop up in Edinburgh, and kindly sent me, um, although I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know whether I'm actually grateful for him to send this, a sample of a whiskey called Glen Marnock. And uh, Glen Marnock is, is, well, I'm not gonna put map up. There's nothing to put up because it doesn't actually exist. There is no distillery called Glenmarnock. Um, there is no region called Glenmarnock. I don't think there is actually a Glen called Marnock, um, unless it's a bloke whose first name is Glen and whose surname is Marnock, um, who might be, it might be a guy uh, that works for uh, Aldi, because this is a um, single malt whiskey that's released by Aldi. So Aldi, um, if you're watching from America and particularly might have heard of Aldi because I don't know if they come over there. It's one of these discounted supermarkets. So at the moment we've got Aldi and Lidl. It used to be well, Netto, I think, is still around, but it, there was Aldi, Netto, and Lidl that were um, kind of European chain supermarkets that came into UK. It was heavily discounted. Not a lot of it were brands. A lot of it was stuff that looked like brands, big brands, but were a lot cheaper a little bit rough around the edges, not a great reputation. Now, Aldi and Lidl in particular have started to get very good reputations in the UK. They're becoming increasingly popular in this kind of like post-Brexit, post-recession, credit crunch, all this lot. Nobody's got any money to spend. Everybody wants value for money. Now, value doesn't necessarily, to me, value means good value for money, not it's cheap because there seems to have been the, oh, it's a value supermarket. No, it's a cheap supermarket. That doesn't mean you're getting good value for money. However, they have started to then do things like whiskies and rums that are very, you know, kind of like old, not brands, but you know, a 40 year old single malt whiskey for 50 quid. What the hell? All of this sort of crazy stuff. Um, so Charlie sent me Glen Marnock. So it's Glen Marnock, limited release Isla single malt, at 40%. So this is a picture of the bottle. Now Glen Marnock, they have a, a Speyside and a Highland version as well. So instantly you're going, right, okay, how's this supposed distillery got an Isla and a Highland and a Speyside? It's because it, it, it doesn't exist. It sounds Scottish, right, we'll call it that. Um, so it's, um, I think this version that he sent me is, is unaged. They do have unaged versions. You tend to find these, particularly out in little, tend to come out before Christmas because it's Christmas presents. So you tend to see more of them in stock kind of um, October, November, December, although that is starting to be bloody August, September, all this like now because Christmas is starting early. Um, for Christmas presents, you know, a single malt because this is I think $17.99 a bottle. So $17.99 a bottle for a single malt from Isla or Speyside or anything like that. Present, ideal. Whiskey, he drinks whiskey, she drinks whiskey. I wanna get them a present. Uh, I, I don't really like them that much, but I wanna get them a bottle of whiskey, 18 quid, top stuff. Um, and you're starting to find um, sort of aged whiskies, maybe not necessarily single malts, but like aged blended whiskies. Um, Lidl did a range called Glen Alba, where I think it was a 32 year old, 32 year old blended whiskey, and it was 45 quid, maybe even 40 quid, which is just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, but they can get away with it. What they're doing essentially is buying almost the equivalent of overstocks. So distilleries, um, uh, warehouses that are holding stock have got an overstock and they just want to get rid of it. Little Aldi, whoever, will come in, buy it bulk, buy it cheap, bottle it up, stick a label on it and off you go. Whether there is, they've got whiskey buyers that are actually really concentrating on the quality of it or it is, yeah, we'll take all that batch because you're not going to do anything with them and you're just going to chuck them. We'll give you X amount of cask, we can sell it 18 quid a bottle and we're going to make I don't know, four quid a bottle on it profit, but we're gonna have loads of them and loads of people are gonna buy it. So fair play to them, hey, that's business, isn't it? But it'll be interesting to see what the quality's like because what seems to have happened is that they are now starting to consider the quality as well. And a lot of people are going, do you know what? This isn't actually that bad. So 
Where it's from, no idea. What distillery? The um, theory is that it's probably Kalila because it tends to be, Kalila makes a lot of whiskey. Um, they're one of the highest producing um, distilleries on Isla, uh, owned by Diageo, and from what I gather, a lot of um, like own label Isla whiskies. If it's a single malt Isla whiskey, there's a very good chance it's probably from Kalila, more than likely than more than likely of any of the other ones. So, a lot of people are saying, yeah, it's probably Kalila. So, no age statement. So obviously difficult to know how old it is. It's, it's entirely likely that they're buying stocks which are a combination of ages and they're just shoving the whole lot together from the same distillery. So it's a single mole, but it could be a different ages that they're just wanging in. And if there's three, four year old, they wouldn't put an age statement on it because you wouldn't want it. To, oh, Aldi's four year old whiskey. Um, but it's entirely possible that there's all sorts of stuff in it. It's also entirely possible that coloring has been added to it as well. Um, because it's sort of looking a little bit too golden, if that makes sense. It's difficult to say, it looks a little bit, I don't know, there's something about this colour, and I know it looks fairly generic, and you're probably going, Ben, it looks like whiskey, but there's just something about it which just, to me, goes, colouring's been added to that, and I would not be surprised at all, just to maintain consistency. Just to go, we've got all this whiskey in, we're gonna to need to just add a little bit of coloring in, just to level everything out, make it look a little bit more like whiskey, bottle it up, happy days. So, 18 quid single malt Isla. Right, okay, on the nose, it feels quite tight. There is peatiness there, it's not massively so, which kind of then does go, well, maybe it is Kalila, but, Difficult to say whether there's any coloring added to it. I tend to get this weird plasticiness if, I, if coloring has been added to it, and I'm not really picking that up. It noses a little bit thin. There's not much depth to it. It's quite flat. There is peatiness there. There is, there, there is, a, there is a, a bit of a bonfire smokiness. It's just a bit dull. It, it's like, it's like you, you turn the volume up on something and you get lots of noise and it, you turn it down to the point where you can hear it but it's a little you know you kind of fiddle with the bass and the treble and everything goes a little bit flat and a little bit soulless and that's kind of what i'm getting on the nose it, yeah it's it's lacking something it's almost like it's lacking body and depth and complexity it's not awful it's not rough it's not it just it feels like it's a bit dead and a bit limp yeah um and it's hmm it starts off almost unpeated <laughs> it's really weird uh, for for a couple of seconds while it was in my mouth it was just liquid. There wasn't even any flavor. And then all of a sudden there was this burst of an, an earthy smokiness. And it goes earthy smokiness, have some earthy smokiness, keep having some earthy smokiness, have a bit of cigarette smoke, and I've gone, bye. And, and that's pretty much it. It's not as dead as the nose is, which is still pretty flat, but There's no finish. That, I mean, that, that elements of Isla would just was like, I, I keep tasting it. But there's no finish to it at all. I can't even tell that I've just drunk some peated whiskey. It's just disappeared. If you hold it in your mouth, it does nothing whatsoever. And as you, as you swallow, as your mouth and your tongue make the motion to swallow, to bring it to the back of your throat and, bring, and swallow it. It's almost like you put it in your mouth and it stays flat and then it wakes up with movement. You know, like orangina, shake it to wake it. You need to kind of move it a bit in your mouth and then you get some peat. And it is quite a burst of, and there is an intensity to it. It's, it's not massive, but it's definitely there and it's slightly peppery and it's, it's more, of a, more of an earthy smokiness, but it's definitely it's slightly ashy as well. And there's a hint of this kind of ashy cigarette smoke, 
which kind of turns me off a little bit because I'm not a great fan of it. But then you swallow and then it pretty much buggers off again. You get, but there is a little lingering bit this time. But it is a little bit like I've licked an ashtray and I just can't quite get rid of the taste. I had to drink quite a bit of water to get rid of the, the peatiness that was lingering in my mouth from the elements of Ilo. I've got a feeling I'm gonna need a, little, a, a lot of water to get rid of this, but it's to get rid of a slightly unpleasant aftertaste. It's, n it's not quite metallic, but it's slightly there. It's slightly getting a bit coppery rather than peaty. It needs some sweetness. It needs, it needs something to counterbalance. It really is, oh, right, we're a peated whiskey. Oh, I have some peat. There you go, there's peat, off you go. Right, without giving you anything else to counter it and play with and, and you know, let's surround it by sweetness and have a bit of earthiness and all this lot. It, it's a very kind of like peat and done. We're spent, that sort of thing. Would it have made a difference if it was say 46%, you know, 43, 46%, just to give it something a little bit extra? It might have done actually. If they'd have released it, it might be 43, maybe even 46%, just to give it something else, just to give that slightly higher alcohol percentage, to give your mouth something else to play with, to give your, your taste buds something else to go rather than you've got whiskey, or you're moving it around, have the peat, and then it goes, just to lift it. Now it's not a, it's not awful, it's not undrinkable, it's just very, it's soulless, and it's kind of what I would expect, snob that I am, from something like Aldi. It, it really is, it's kind of a, it's doing an okay job, and it's, I, I don't shop at Aldi. I'm certainly not a Marks and Spencer's or Waitrose shopper, but, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to buy baked beans apart from Heinz baked beans. I'm not going to buy tomato ketchup apart from Heinz. Um, you know, there are certain brands that if I've had other brands before, they just, they just don't do it for me. Uh, and I get the impression that, and a lot of people say, actually, no, it's really good. And we've just, ne we've never shopped there. We've never given it the chance. But you get this impression, call it snobbiness, which is true, where you go, yeah, none of it's going to be quite as good. It's going to be nearly but it's just gonna be missing something because there's not as much care on it. There's not as much um, you know, history or, or, or heritage brand or anything like that. It, it, I can just imagine, you know, Aldi baked beans are gonna be, yeah, they're baked beans, but they're not really, they don't taste like baked beans. They're just not quite there. Yes, they're baked beans and tomato sauce, but they're not Heinz. And it's this sort of thing. It's kind of, yeah, it's an Isla whiskey and it's got peatiness to it, but it's, it's, not, it's not a proper Isla whiskey but it's 18 quid, you know? So if you were buying an 18 quid bottle of Isla single malt, what do you expect? Particularly when Isla whiskies are starting to ramp up in price. So, hmm. It's a little bit too cigarette-y for me. And I would struggle, if, if somebody gave me a bottle of it, I would struggle to get through the bottle. It would take a long time. But it's 18 quid a bottle, and if you bear that in mind, there's nothing actually wrong with it. It ain't great, but it's not awful. I've had worse 18 quid bottles of whiskey. I've had worse 30 quid bottles of whiskey. But it, it, <laughs> it's kind of ended up pretty much exactly how I thought it might be. Not what I was hoping it would be, I was hoping it would be better, but it's sadly, it meets my expectations. It doesn't really exceed them. They're not under my expectations. It's not worse than I thought it was gonna be. It just pretty much hits exactly where I thought it would be in terms of perceived quality or just the, the depth and the complexity and the amount of flavors that are in there. It's just a bit bleh, but it's not bleh but it's not, yay. Don't know what I'm doing with that. Um, Charlie, thank you for that. I'd love to know what you think of that. So if you could put some comments in for me to let me know what you think. And if anybody else has had the Glenmarnock, please do let me know, I'd love to know. It's it's interesting and it's always fascinating to try the, the own label stuff to see where it's, uh, where it's coming from. Um, so we have 10 to go. Bloody hell, 10 to go. So uh, yeah, the final countdown has begun. I'm not gonna sing Europe, don't worry about that. Um, 
Um, but yeah, we're on the final countdown, 10 to go, and um, it's going to be fun. So I shall see you in the next one. Cheers.